Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, Hurricane Track here, Thursday now, September the 4th, 2025. And we now have Invest Area 91L out in the deep tropical Atlantic. And yes, this one could be some trouble headed for our friends in the islands. First, we're going to get to all of that. But first, I want to show you something kind of amazing that has happened with Lorena. We're going to get to that after we look at the National Hurricane Center homepage and kind of set the stage for everything that I will present to you this afternoon. So let's get started, shall we? Good to have you along with me. Let's see what we got. Uh, yep, there it is, 91L. This is the 8 a.m. information since this was released. It has been designated by the fine men and women down at the National Hurricane Center as an invest area, and we will get to that in just a moment. But first, let's just click on Tropical Storm Lorena up here, and let's look at the uh, track map off the Hurricane Center site. Notice something compared to yesterday and the day before? This is never going to make landfall. Remember before it showed a track heading up into you know, something like this? Nope. And the Euro saw this. I think that's really interesting. The GFS was pretty fast with the evolution of this coming on into northwest Mexico and the leftovers moving into the southwest U.S. And the European model didn't see it that way. And it looks like that's going to be more or less the more correct solution. All of that being said, there is still a lot of moisture with our tropical storm up here. By the way, that's Kiko, a very small and intense hurricane. And we'll talk about this more later on. It's heading in the general vicinity of Hawaii, but that is still many days away, and I'm not too concerned with that just yet. Uh, but yeah, there is some moisture streaming up into the southwest U.S., and if you look at the Tucson radar, we can see some rain showers in and around the I-10 corridor. You have mountains out here that block some of the signals of the radar beam there, but really nothing too widespread, nothing too heavy. So we dodged somewhat of a bullet there. Some good rainfall you needed in the desert southwest, but this was not uh, looking like it was going to be a real big problem, and it's even less so apparently as we move through today. So there you go. There's that. Now, going back to the National Hurricane Center homepage, homepage, there we go. Again, here's Invest Area 91L, and I want to show it to you off the Hurricane Center's like link to the satellite imagery, because this is pretty cool how you can, I just like the color of it, the color's the geo color. Uh, almost looks like you're sitting out in space, doesn't it? So there's our area of interest, our Invest Area. This is another area, I guess, somewhat of interest as well monsoon trough sitting out here, the intertropical convergent zone, and the deep tropical Atlantic. Other features to point out, upper level low pressure area sitting here, trough sitting out uh, across Florida and into the southwest Atlantic, and then pretty good deep easterly flow coming out of the tropical Atlantic through the Caribbean islands and into the eastern Caribbean. So let's look at things from the vorticity perspective. You know what a fan I am of this product and let's notice this is the 9 UTC update and I'm saving these a couple of them like we'll do a little stop motion for you there's our area of interest right there and what I want you to notice when I move this forward to 15 Z you can clearly see we're starting to get more of a ball shape it's more concentrated it's less stretched out starting to become more consolidated and that leads me to this nice post here over on the old Twitter from Nikhil I think that's how you would say that name and I love the annotation I don't have to do the work other people have done it for me uh, hey you know you, you steal and share the very best right but these are smart people they know what they're doing and they know how to analyze things and uh, I like the fact that he's already written everything on here for me to show you and so yeah persistent convection shower thunderstorm activity overnight has helped our now 91L progress towards tropical cyclone genesis with the ITCZ intertropical convergent zone now clearly beginning to roll up and our trade winds warping Maria Donnelly. Convective coverage over the next couple of days will determine how quickly this tilting of our wave axis occurs. So all of that pop back on very fancy ways of saying and certainly very accurate of, yeah, this is gradually getting better organized. And another way to look at it, too, all the different things that Nikhil has mentioned shows how complex this is. It's not your typical large tropical wave that's already on its way, kind of by itself. 
there are different elements to the puzzle here. The trade winds, the ITCZ, that's the intertropical convergence zone, the monsoonal southwesterlies, again, all very nicely annotated on this still image. But in the middle of it all, we do have the central convective mass, uh, area of thunderstorms, and that is what we can see going back to the vorticity signature. It's showing up right there. So it's starting to congeal and get together, but it's pretty small overall. The envelope of energy is not very big. Uh, Aaron had a larger pouch of that, of uh, energy, as you might recall. This is a little bit smaller overall, and so that might affect it down the road somewhat. And off to the west and southwest, there's that other blob. And so all of this is just part of the overall, again, that word puzzle, as we try to fit the pieces together and hopefully glean some kind of an indication of what's going to happen, where this will end up, and who will be impacted. Uh, you know, Questions that we don't have a lot of answers for just yet because it is still quite early in the overall process. Now our feature, let's use, I guess, black. That'll pop out the best. Our feature is located roughly out in this area uh, on the sea surface temperature anomalies map, something like that. So it's in ocean water temperature that is warmer than average to about a degree Celsius or so through this region. That orange color, if we refer to the legend down here, it's in this shading. So at least one degree Celsius warmer than average all the way across until we reach the islands. And that is important because this will encounter warmer sea surface temperatures, especially once it crosses about 50 degrees longitude, which is roughly right in here. I'm trying to draw a straight line for you. The water temperatures will go up. The ocean heat content, that is to say, the water temperatures are warm, not just at the surface, but fairly deep. All of that's going to work in the favor of our system. And wherever it ends up, we'll just draw a huge area out here, assuming it's somewhere in that somewhat oval shape that I have drawn, over the next week to 10 days, it has mostly anomalously warm water temperatures to work with, right? After all, this is September 3rd. This map's always a day behind. We are nearing peak season. All of this is to be expected. Added to that, the very cold relative to average Pacific. I mean, this really looks like a La Nina, and this is going to come into play more and more as we progress through the month. But we're at the early part of the month, and we've got 91L. So what's going to happen with it? Now let's use the old blue color, and we will take a, a gander at some of the modeling. So this is the GFS, 12Z run for today, my favorite area of the atmosphere to get things started with. 5,000 feet up, 850 millibars, and the cyclonic vorticity. And you can clearly see, I mean, just look right in here, okay? You have these wind barbs, barbs going this way, and these going this way, so you've already got some turning there. We saw that as evidenced on the satellite loop that I showed you, and we saw that on this post over here. Everything's you know, starting to spin just a little bit. So we have our seedling sitting right here. Another big part of this is the ridge of high pressure to the north, and the stage is generally set. Now one thing that I do want to point out, as I drop the annotation out of there, let's look at the roughly middle layers of the atmosphere for moisture content. Now here's where things do get a little bit questionable. There's a considerable amount of lower humidity air, Saharan air, around, and our system down here doesn't have a lot of deep moisture to work with in its vicinity. So we don't have this large plume of just super rich mid-level humidity uh, to really energize this feature. So a couple of things about that. One, there I am, it'll remain small because it's not going to be able to pull in ample amounts of deep, rich moisture from around it, because you can clearly see uh, it's generally surrounded by fairly dry air. It's not like we would see in July, obviously, and with us approaching the peak of the season here, you'd expect things to be pretty conducive, and they are, but they're not the utmost of conduciveness, right? So it's going to be probably pretty small in its size. That means that it can fluctuate in intensity pretty rapidly. So that's something to keep an eye on. It could ramp up very quickly. It could struggle the whole time. It could ramp up and then kind of fall apart again. 
This one's going to be tricky. Aaron was pretty straightforward overall once that thing wrapped up and started its march off to the west at a higher latitude, it was pretty evident what was going to happen. And, of course, we got surprised as it became a Category 5 there north of the islands. This is still way out in the open tropical Atlantic. So the drier air around it will help to uh, keep it smaller, maybe a little bit weaker. And then that, because it's not going to take up a lot of room in the atmosphere and feel any kind of weaknesses to the north, the small size of it will help it to stay more on a westerly course for the next several days, which means in about five to seven days, this could be knocking on the door, even though that's a table, of our friends in the Lesser Antilles, all right? A lot of stuff to keep up with, I know. Uh, not a straightforward, it's not a forecast. Models are not forecast per se, but we don't have answers just yet that we can hang our hats on, all right? So... There's the caveat, as it, as it were. So let's go back to the 850 vorticity here. And again, I want you to watch this area right in here. And let's see how this evolves over the next few days. So let's move this out. 24 hours still you know, trying to ramp itself up and wrap up what little moisture there is. By 48 hours, it seems to start to really get its act together. So just two days from now, we should start to see more of a cyclonic uh, turning to it, more cloud cover. Like, it should be obvious, right? And that other little feature sitting over here, it's interesting, it kind of gets pulled in, and that could help it. That little, other little moisture packet off to the uh, west and southwest, it kind of gets enveloped into the whole thing, and it's off to the races by the time we get to day four. And you notice here, it, uh, 96 hours out, still to the south of a very stout subtropical ridge. And again, all these lines in here, these height lines, almost exactly, if you think about a topographic map, that's what this is showing. This is a big mountain of air sitting out over the Atlantic. And with this system being small, but pretty well defined here by day four, it should remain on a general westerly course for the next several days, even beyond what I'm showing you here. So let's keep it moving. There's day five, finally by day six, and then at day seven, very close there to the north and east of Barbados, and you notice it gets pretty dense there with the little height lines inside. Very tight vorticity, very small system. We can change the map extent and get a little bit closer up look at it. And here's what I want to point out. Again, the overall moisture and so forth with it. Small system, GFS getting it down to about 980 millibars. So if this were to be verbatim, uh, be looking at a hurricane, you know, just looking at the model one week out. Um, so we'll see, you know, this whole notion that it's going to just automatically follow Aaron's path starting to seem less likely, but one week out, I want to make sure you note that right there, 168 hours, that's a long time. It's a week from today, next Thursday, you know, it could be here. It could be sitting up here. Sure. It could not be there at all. Maybe something happens and this thing sputters along and it's still just a sharp wave axis coming through. We don't know. But the models are starting to hone in more and more. And certainly want to make sure we acknowledge that. The Euro is pretty much on top of this. I'm going to show you that in a minute. The GFS finally catching on that it's going to move generally westward, stay kind of small. But the, the, the problem here is when they are small like this, the global models don't have as an easy of a time resolving them. So we're going to have to wait probably a few model cycles to get some of the hurricane-specific models, like, like these new uh, HAFS models and the old H-Wharf there and others, right? So we're in the beginning stages of it. we got an invest area. At least there's something to track, more than just calling it a disturbance, and that will help things as we go along. Now let's compare it real quick to the 6Z Euro, and, uh, you know, by the time the 12Z comes out, it'll be mid to late afternoon. And I wanted to do this for you as early in the day as I could and at least look at what the GFS was showing. So here's the Euro 6Z this morning. By the way, what does that mean? That means it was initialized at 6 Zulu time. Same thing as UTC, meaning roughly 2 a.m. Eastern, the model was initialized with all kinds of data from all over the world. Same kind of deal. There's our system down there at the 5,000 foot level. 
move this out to the six day time frame. I do love that we get three hour frames here every three hours so it just seems like a smoother animation doesn't it so there it is pretty small you can clearly see it right there moving right along and it too at day six very close to Barbados and this is important because having that agreement between two major global models even though it might not be <clears throat> preferable to have a hurricane coming at you you at least want to have confidence in the forecast now six to eight, uh, six to seven days out, still a lot can change, but we're not seeing this complete, um, well, the GFS is like nothing and then the Euro is something. They are starting to agree more. So that gives us at least a little bit more confidence that something is going to happen and move its way towards the island. So, you know, with it being hurricane season in September and all, you guys down there need to be watching this. Of course you do. Other than that, we'll just have to wait and see because as the old thumbnail says here, 91L could be a problem. It might not be, but it could be. And again, I know that sounds like, well, Mark, you're pretty smart there. But this really is starting to look like it could end up being a problem for somewhere in the islands. And one more little piece before I let you go. Remember, please do remember, even though we are hurricane track and that word hurricane garners a lot of attention versus the word tropical storm or depression or even an open wave, any big weather feature out there can cause problems, especially down in the Caribbean. Some of these mountainous areas, heavy rainfall is an impact. So at the very least, it does look like a period of very heavy rain, squally conditions is going to be headed toward the islands and possibly have to see how it shakes out, maybe even a hurricane threat. That's why I said 91L could be a problem. So we'll stay on top of it and we'll see what shakes out over the coming days. All right. Until then, and as we move along, you guys have a good rest of your Thursday. Thanks as always for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I appreciate it. Hope you learned something as always from all of us at Hurricane Track. I am Mark Suttoth. I'll see you again tomorrow.